good morning to one and all good morning to all of you we welcome to our attend to webinar entitled agro tourism through underutilized ethnic food so this uh, idp nahe uh, running at the sigachef college of horticulture and forestry central agriculture university in fall so it's a project it is meant for uh, the students and we are having to benefit to the students from the view on this uh, to start up the new venture using this uh, uh, all whatever they have learned and uh, you know to go for the startup in agriculture and allied sector so this is our series of webinar we have conducted more than nine webinar this is our 10th webinar and this was organized by uh, college of horticulture and forestry under the leadership of our nodal officer uh, professor uh, dr b n hazarika uh, dean college of horticulture and forestry so uh, under this uh, online uh, a uh, workshop uh, this uh, agro tourism through underutilized ethnic foods and uh, the topics are significance of underutilized traditional ethnic food resources nutritional health benefits and immune boosting economic empowerment by ethnic food tourism as you know uh, all of you that uh, the children and the adult becoming day by day malnutrition they are not getting sufficient uh, nutrients like vitamins minerals which are more sufficient uh, uh, there it is all the nutrients which are there in our ethnic food so the ethnic food is a forgotten one uh, by the people you know that uh, recent days people are look for the tasty uh, food but then if you see that the traditional foods of way back from the long back as uh, they are rich in nutrients contains a lot of vit vitamins and minerals even these uh, you know kind of uh, uh, natural steroids so many of the tubers and which is having natural steroids which can control the uh, viral infection so uh, if you forget to consume uh, such kind of uh, you know tubers like colocasia alocasia may have lot of uh, you know you may miss that uh, natural steroids and some of uh, very important foods like um, brown rice in uh, india uh, like in northeast india brown rice is a very common uh, rich in vitamins i and iron so many of uh, you know people are suffering from a uh, malnutrition of iron content so uh, not only that even some kind of other uh, traditional food the way uh, they conserve it uh, locally in the kitchen garden or in the hilly region so uh, to uh, protect and preserve all these uh, uh, you know ethnic food we are promoting this one not only that we can pack it the way how to we can pack it the way how to uh, dry that material and we can um, bring up uh, to the market or make awareness to the other people so aiming to this one we have uh, uh, you know uh, five resource person uh, with us and they will be uh, delivering this uh, lectures and dear participant uh, for the information more than 703 participants have registered for this one uh, starting from um, undergraduate uh, master and post graduate even of course some of the scientists who are eager to know what is this ethnic food how we can preserve it how we can promote it or how we can take a venture venture about this uh, product so in this line Uh, so we have uh, this uh, program for the two days uh, so dear participant uh, so please uh, make use of this uh, program if the network is uh, not permitting you uh, please go uh, to the uh, live stream so shortly i will uh, upload it that live stream uh, you can watch i will be sending through email so with this introduction um, i'll give time to i'll invite our organizing secretary dr t sandibala of today's webinar uh, to give a welcome address
good morning everybody a very warm good morning to all of you in this 10th webinar inaugural functions we are supposed to conduct in two days in this coming 17 and 18 september 2020 and the topic agro tourism through underutilized ethnic food this has been divided into three themes that first one is the significance of underutilized traditional or ethnic food resources and the second one is the nutritional health benefit and immune boost and the third one is the economic empowerment of ethnic food tourism organized by central uh, college of horticulture and forestry central agriculture university in fall so first of all i on behalf of the organizing committee would like to extend my heartfelt welcome to our respected honorable vice chancellor and today's chief patron professor m Pranji singh central agricultural, agricultural university in fall so we are blessed by your support and guidance. I also would like to express my sincere welcome to our eminent patron, Dr. S. Basanta Singh, Director of Instructions, CAU. And further, I also would like to convey my honest welcome to our dynamic dean and chairpersons, Professor Bian Hazarika, CHF. And I also would like to express a very special welcome to our active co-chairperson, Dr. P. Raja, Associate Nodal Officer, Nahib. Further, I also extend my deepest welcome to all the four resource person, Dr. Ravi Ketterpal, Executive Secretary, Epari, Bangkok, and Dr. Srade Maratha, Associate Project Director, Dean Dayal Research Institute, New Delhi, Dr. Ranindra Kumar Majumdar, Professor and Head, Department of the Fees Processing Technology and Engineering, College of Fisheries, Lambutira, and Dr. Badami Ketrimim, Founder of Agro Women Entrepreneur Cluster Manipur. Hof, we will be enlightened in these coming days with valuable traditional underutilized ethnic food of various places. Further, I also would like to share my special welcome to all our distinguished uh, participants. With your active participations, our motto of conducting this 10th webinar will going to be make a grand success. And also, I would like to express on its welcome to our active committee member, uh, particularly co-organizing secretary, coordinator, Dr. Danita Raswa, coordinator, RC, Dr. RC Sakivar, Dr. N. Surmina Devi, Dr. Ajay Kumara, and one and all who directly or indirectly involved in conducting this 10th webinar. And last but not the least, again, I welcome you one and all in these two days, all the best. Thank you. And I want to make a slide. Uh, okay, now I'll hand over this uh, platform to our coordinator, the Dr. P. Raja. Thank you, Madam, for your warm welcome to all our participant, our resource person, and our dean, sir. Uh, before um, going further, I would like to uh, today's the first speaker. Yeah, first speaker, um, Dr. Ranindra Kumar Majumda, Professor and Head, Department of Fish Processing Technology and Engineering, College of Fisheries, Lembuchera. I would like to read his uh, biodata uh, briefly. Uh, Professor Ranindra Kumar Majumda is serving as a head of the Department of Fish Processing Technology and Engineering, College of Fisheries, Central Agriculture University, Lembuchera, Tribura. So he has completed uh, various projects funded under different ministries, MFPI, Government of India, DBT, and then CAU. He has various uh, fields such as development of ready to serve fish product through flex flexible report pouch technology for Northeast markets, improvement of uh, safety and quality of uh, Transglutaminase mediated rest restricted fish product by bioactive phenolics and terpenoids, fermented fish product of Northeast India. And he has published more than uh, 60 papers in both international and national. And uh, he has made, he, he has customized product like fish pickle, prawn pickle, fish curcure, ready to serve fish curry, boneless fish cubes, 
low cost solar tent dryer and so on so he will be speaking uh, after uh, this uh, first session now may may i request our uh, respected dean sir uh, professor b n hazarika to address this august gathering in the online sir please uh, is it audible dr raza sir it is audible sir okay then uh, very good morning to everyone uh, indeed it is a great pleasure for us that uh, we are able to organize the tenth webinar under the nahe program so to, uh, in this good morning uh, i offer my heartiest uh, congratulation to organizers also and uh, i do welcome all the resource persons uh, who are uh, going to deliver going to deliver their lectures uh, during this uh, pandemic time and uh, i welcome on my own behalf and, and on behalf of the college of horticulture and forestry welcome all the resource person uh, from uh, abroad as well as from india uh, for their uh, valuable deliberations and i hope that uh, this uh, topic is very important uh, agrotourism of the by utilizing the under utilizing organic um, foods so definitely the viewers will be benefited out of it so i have a warm welcome to everyone thank you very much uh, thank you very much sir for your address uh, to all the participant for your encouragement for your uh, valuable support and giving all these uh, logistic and other support sir thank you so much under your guidance we could able to conduct this uh, 10th webinar uh thank you so much sir uh now uh i i'll give the time to organizing secretary there is a slight change in the program so first we will listen the lecture from our respected renowned person sir ranendra kumar majumdar sir will be speaking about in two topic uh, the first one uh, that is significance of underutilized traditional and ethnic food resources as well as uh, on the economic empowerment of ethnic food tourism because uh, uh, unfortunately one of our uh, expert that is ravi ketapal got hospitalized yesterday night due to the covid so there is a slight change so let's listen from uh, sir so i would like to uh, uh, hand over the platform to sir dr ranindra kumar sir please proceed <laughs> Good morning to all of you. Well, uh, my regards to our beloved Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. Panjish Singh Sarji. My regards to our Director of Instruction, Dean College of Fisheries. and dr raja and my sincere regards to all the organizers the team of the organizing team of this webinar first of all i am honored to be one of the that means speaker in this because i have been working on the fermented fish product of the northeast india since 1998 so still i am working on this even uh, my students pg phd they are also working on this uh, fermented fish products I have seen that uh, this segment was totally neglected. Nowadays, students they are not ready to work with the shidal, work with the smoked fish, work with the sm smoked meat like this. So anyhow, now I am encouraging my students that see this. Uh, even USA FDA also they have agreed. They, they are now allowing the fish sauces of the Southeast Asian uh, to the USA market. About ten years back, the scenario was not like this. They were they were thinking that. fermented fish or uh, food or fermented food they are having different types of complex microbes or other things but now their health benefit has been known to the, all the scientific community now yes, actually yesterday madam was telling santiwala that uh, this uh, first speaker is not coming so anyhow i have mixed my all the things together the first of all the significance of this traditional and ethnic fish product and how this can through food tourism 
how this can improve the economic condition of the Northeast. So before uh, entering into the subject, now I am giving some hints about the Northeast. You know, this Northeast of India, uh, it was in one corner of the country and earlier the, it was comprised of uh, seven states and then Sikkim entered. Now earlier it, it was known as seven sisters. Now there are eight states. <clears throat> Now, food, you know, the food has always been a component of the tourism. Not recently, but earlier also, food was one of the important component of the tourism. And recently, then it has been one of the important part of the tourism. Because once, now the tourists, it was not like earlier tourists, now the tourists are better informed, they're educated, they're cultured, highly cultured. And before going to any place, they first know yeah, what is available there. And most attractive thing is the food. And so food offers a gateway into the other cultures through taste, through food preparation, through whole eating environment. So whenever people come or visit any place, they first target to uh, search whatever foods are there. Then this is followed by their other, uh, the traditional fabrics, traditional crafts. So food and drink provide lasting memories that define a holiday hmm, or travel experience. Now, Northeast India, you know, this area is about 2.55 uh, lakh square kilometer and population is, at per year last uh, population census, it is 40 million. And most importantly, there are 166 tribal groups. This is not found in any part of this country. Now, Northeast India shares over 2,000 kilometers of border with the Bhutan, China, Myanmar, and the Bangladesh, and important religions, uh, in, in, uh, important the religion is the Hindu, Muslim, Christian, and <clears throat> Buddhist. Our Northeast tribes, because our Northeast tribes is completely different from the other tribes of the mainland, that is the India. <clears throat> and it is said they are indo mongolers history says they are indo mongolers tibeto Burmese, and proto australians All the tribes are having own distinct culture and unique cultural identity. Even they can be identified by their face, uh, by their even physique, by their dress, by their rituals, by their foods, everything. So food culture and taste and flavors of the Northeast India is completely different from the rest of the country. Here, almost 100% is non-vegetarian and they found a spice. Because it is said that the Northeast Indian, they, I, our, the Northeast Indian, they do not uh, uh, favor bread or chapati. So they want rice, but rice is generally it is tasteless. To make it tasty, they need more spice in the food. So one important thing is this, this ethnic population of this Northeast, they lead an intimate life with the nature. Mm, they remain in you know, very uh, close harmony with the forest and environment and their lifestyle, their food, everything is dependent on the forest. So Northeast India is the actual is a cultural bridge between the India on the one side and Southeast Asia, China, Inner Asia and Burma on the other side. And this is through ethnic and linguistic angles. <clears throat> so these are the different tribes of the Northeast from the eight tribes. Although see their dress, their physique, their look, uh, uh, everything is different. Even their culture, their food, everything is different. Now, regarding climates of the Northeast India, Northeast India is, is generally cooler than the rest of the country. And in the valley region of the Assam, in the January, the temperature is around 16 degrees. While well, in the mountain, it is 14 degrees, and in some places, it will be sub-zero also. The minimum average rainfall of the Northeast India is above 1,000 millimeters. And you know this world's highest rainfall zone, this is Cherapunji in the motion dam, is located in the Northeast, where annual rainfall is more than 11,465 mm. About 95% of the rain is received during the monsoon, and mostly in the June, from May, and the monsoon extends from the May to September. <clears throat> One important, another important thing in the Northeast India is the traditional knowledge. That much of huge number of ITKs are not available in, in any part of the country. Because here, the traditional knowledge and the biocultural diversity, these are intermingled each other. And they are essential, they are considered to be the essential component of the Northeast and for, for the development of the Northeast. And mostly, you know, in the Northeast, this is a matrimonial society, a matriarchal society, where the women of this region, 
are mainly custodians of the different indigenous knowledges you know, for the pandemic food medicine plants uh, you know the zoom culture is only available in the northeast but the policies and the technologies formulated by the government uh, for conservation of the resources of the, uh, for conservation of, yeah of the resources of the northeast hmm. whenever they take such any decision so they do not actually recognize the women of this region now coming gradually to the food habits i can say what they do not eat what they do not eat if we compare a nagaland if you see nagaland it is one type of you can say it is a mini wuhan what they do not eat from insects which comes to the lamp to snakes to yak to elephant uh to all sorts of birds dogs and uh, rabbits pig yo uh, what not there is nothing no animal is there left which in the northeast india are not consumed but that may be due to compulsion because you know this northeast india since like mongolians uh, their food habits are similar to the mongolians and uh, because northeast india was the hilly region people has to climb up so uh, there are, and there and and uh, since they are remaining in some high altitude their oxygen level in the blood is also less so they need more oxygen uh more oxygen and to store more oxygen they need more iron in their blood and it is said that the mongolians also they eat more uh meat so meat can provide more iron in the blood uh, this may be one of the reason that they prefer more meat uh, in their diet uh, because to get more iron in their blood for storing oxygen and in the aquatic food all sorts of fish they eat mm, prawns are not available here uh, marine prawn only some uh, fresh uh, culture of freshwater prawn has started recently moreover this freshwater eel all sorts of snails mussels frogs they eat now what is traditional or ethnic foods <clears throat> what is traditional or ethnic foods any foods which, which is originated from the heritage or the or any cultural group uh, and which is socially socially and culturally accepted by the consumers inside and outside the respective ethnic group this is known as the traditional food or ethnic food ethnic food actually represent the culture of the particular community hmm. they are uh, knowledge on the food production they are knowledge on the food conservation uh, so people from various countries they actually commoditize this ethnic food to attract the tourist so various countries are eager to introduce their ethnic foods hmm. and they and these are exposed to the tourist so the tourist are attracted more and more and the more the tourist come it helps in the uh, that development of the economy of the particular region or or, or the particular area so in ethnic based uh, ethnic food based tourism what is happen here ethnic food culture is commoditized here ethnic food culture is commoditized along with the whenever ethnic food culture is commoditized so side by simultaneously other their lifestyles their artifacts their fabrics kept all become commoditized so a truly uh, authentic cultural experience is gained when consumption of uh, through consumption of the local cuisines so this ethnic food tourism it is sometimes also known as culinary tourism uh, gastronomic tourism like in different ways now coming to the fish these are the different fermented fish products of the india northeast india you can say it is a treasure of the different fermented fish because the reason is for long time back about say 100 years back there was huge low lying areas particularly in the assam and adjoining areas uh, so but uh, and the post monsoon period there was a huge catch but that time there was no good uh, road uh, communication no icing or no other preservation facility except to dry the product or keep it for the lean period but dying also was not possible due to continuous rain spell uh, so that time after several trial and error method they developed one method this is called the fermentation of the fish and the outcome you know this is the shidal different types of shidal uh, then uh, sometimes the feed is also fish is also mixed with the plants and they have made hantak uh, then uh, dangguitu hmm, different types of other fermented fish products there's a given name uh, in the different states uh, according to uh, their culture i mean and this is this type of fermented fish is the only fermented fish in the world 
where salt is not used. What it indicates? It indicates that means this fermentation technology has evolved before people started using salt. That means it is said that it has been evolved before British invaded Northeast India, or before British came to India, came to this Northeastern part. And because another uh, fermentation is this called fermented hincha, that is salt fermented hincha. Now that is uh, not that much old technology. So now smoked fish, you know, the smoked fish is available. It is a delicacy in the Southeast Asia since it is a delicacy of the Northeast. In the Manipur, you won't get any household where smoked fish are not consumed daily, irrespective of is it rich or poor uh, or any e economic status. So almost all sorts of uh, features are smoked, but uh, importantly, there is no quality control, there is no commercial center so that it can be exported to the others. Mm, but these are in the, all the domestic, uh, all the houses, there are some small tin or in a, any means, uh, they are smoking it because they cannot think their diet without the smoked fish. Now, there is one type of grilling of the fish. This is uh, then generally is available. Uh, this technique is found in the Jantia hills of the Meghalaya. This is called Kwang uh, Shi This is the whole fish is grilled. This is not smoked, this is grilled. Now, coming to the traditional meat products. Traditional meat products are mostly smoked, dried, and fermented. Generally, pig meat, uh, then yolk meat, camel meat, uh, these are used. Uh, pork. Uh, beef, these are used for this smoking and drying purpose. Now, in different uh, states, there are different names. Hmm. Suppose these are the yes, yes, sausage. Uh, suppose uh, these are the yes, sausage type, hmm. where the sausage is made in the uh, pig intestine or the camel intestine. Uh, now, these are also sources type, these are smoking, mm. these are some fat is stored, fat and blood is stored in the intestine, then it is kept for fermentation. This is a different type. This is just a hanging yeah, under the sun for drying. So this is uh, some fat and oil, uh, a fat and uh, blood is kept inside the mm, intestine of the camel and stored. Like this, uh, different types. So this is the most important sources, those numb, uh, pork, Ah, those are these uh, pork sauces in the Meghalaya. So like this, uh, different types of smoke, uh, spit, even this is made from the uh, skin of the cow. Uh, so these are all, the main idea is to keep this preserved. So this basic idea of, uh, developed for fermentation of this thing, uh, this meat product is to keep the product, uh, to improve the shelf life of the product uh, so that that can be used in during the lean period. Moreover, that also improve the taste. Now, this is the some uh, traditional uh, meat products of the Nagaland. Mm, uh, dog is the most uh, favorable meat, uh, more popular uh, than snakes, mm, than other insects, mm, worms. Then these are the different traditional uh, meat products of the Assam. There are different names. Mm, most of these are fermented and smoked mm, and dried. Then, uh, these are the different uh, same. Hmm. Now coming to the plant side, uh, almost all the plant products are available and Northeast is very, you know, the Northeast is a landlocked. Hmm. Fish is very limited, only fresh water fish is available. But in case of Northeast is famous for their hardy products. Uh, and due to hilly region, their uh, agricultural land is very limited, but Northeast is famous for the different types of hardy products. And here, this most important thing in the Northeast is the bamboo shoot and fermentation of the bamboo shoot that is only available in the uh, Korea and other Southeast Asian countries. Different types of, in, in different ways, uh, bamboo shoots are fermented. They are given different name of the different communities. And another thing is fermented soybean. Mm, and soybean is fermented in different ways. In different communities, there are different names. The Kima of Shikim, Awizar, Manipur, Pekang, Mizoram, uh, Peru, Yanuna, Pradesh, Akong, Nagaland, like this in the different states states they are different names. These are very famous uh, because, but these has got some export value, but nobody is thinking that that can be, but these are not produced any, there is not any commercial venture to produce this thing. Because for export, what is most important thing, now FSSI certificate is required, quality control is required, but that is totally lacking in case of fermented meat and 
fish products in the Northeast India. These are the ethnic beverages. Ethnic beverages, the, the method is like this very traditional method. Uh, very uh, a traditional uh, a method of making uh, wine or the rice beer. And in the, all the, almost all the states, they produce the rice beer by using yeast, uh, collecting from the woods, from the some, uh, 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 collecting the plants, uh, leaves um, from the forest. And sometimes they, from this, initially they uh, prepare beer first and from this beer they can uh, also produce um, this wine. So these are having different names and these are very delicious and very attractive and very famous for the outsiders. Even they are served in the uh, bamboo also. Mm. Even they are commercialized. And uh, one Jawaldi is the Mizoram, which is commercialized. Uh, this is the one. So these traditional foods, uh, they have been originated in the Northeast due to the compulsion. Mm. What is, yeah, what are the compulsion? Because this type of variety of traditional foods or ethnic foods or are, are not available in any part of the country. That these factors uh, which uh, compel them to prepare, uh, to go for this type of fermentation or this type of food is the first one is the non-availability of modern food. Because Northeast was a jungle infested, there was no good road communication, no communication through the rivers. And so non-availability of so modern foods are not available in this place. Then lack of modern food preservation or processing facilities. Hmm, there was no uh, modern facilities yeah, available to preserve food uh, um, or to process food so that it can be used in the lean fuel. Then extreme weather. Extreme weather, generally the people, for those who are staying in the hill, they cannot come to the market daily. They, they can uh, maximum twice in the market day. Um, anyway, and due to extreme coolness mm, in uh, about a major part of the year, they cannot go for uh, collecting their foods. Then nomadic lifestyle, due to zoom cultivation and other purpose, uh, they change their place mm, uh, here and there. So, so that uh, they want to keep the uh, food, mainly animal food products in the dried form or converted form, so they can carry it to the new place. There are huge natural resources. As I said, there are huge case of uh, this thing, small varieties of fishes, uh, so moreover, they want to store the food for the lean food. But interestingly, this, most of the processes are generated by them only, but and these are handed down from generation to generation without mass change. Hmm. These are these processes are handed down from generation to generation without mass change. And most of the traditional food processing industries are very rural, labor intensive, seasonal, capital deficient, and informal. They do not follow any quality control whatever uh, that means um, the status of the product that is known by the uh, experience of the producer only. Hmm, there is no quality control. Even from the government itself, hmm, there is no supervision to see their quality. The methods of processing are developed in the homes and improvements are based on the observations of the practitioners. Those who are producing, they only know whether the product is good or bad, or what improvement can be done. They do not know the role of the microbes. They do not know how it can be improved. They do not know whether the food is carrying any uh, that, um, uh, harmful chemicals or, har or harmful microbes. They do not know the value addition of this thing. Even in the, because since I'm a member of the Bureau of Indian Standard, so in, uh, I've seen that there is no standard for the fermented fish product. About um, one year back in one meeting with the, in presence of our, our Director General ICR, I proposed this. Yes, sir, there is no standard for the fermented fish product, even some fermented fish product, you do something. Then they, yeah, they, then they incorporated it, but still uh, there are so many meetings will be required uh, to uh, include this thing in the Bureau of India standard. So like this, there is no uh, supervision of the quality also, uh, whether uh, these are good or bad, because I have seen in the Manipur market, even our uh, Tipura market, even in the Aizal market, so some of the smoke products are very dirty looking. Uh, I know these are not good because smoke product, if it is not smoked properly, it may carry one component is called benzopyrene. It is carcinogen if it is not smoked properly. Even uh, some illegal, uh, this producer also for, uh, for early fermentation of the fish or meat, they use some other chemicals, some other oils that are detrimental. Mm, that, uh, that remains in the food and it have some uh, that means what is called um, 
bioaccumulation uh, after uh, consumption. So present limitation of the ethnic food products of the India, first of all, the lack of quality control and hygiene by the handling and producer. The producer, handler, they do not maintain quality and even they do not maintain their personal hygiene also. There is no standardization. Recently only in my project, I have developed some GMPs for the seedal and other fermented fish products, but I don't think such type of GMPs are there for smoked fish or other things. No standardization, no uniform protocol, lack of adequate logistics for scaling up to the production. Even there is no attempt to uh, improve the um, production, to increase the production, to take it to the uh, commercial scale so that it can be exported. Nowadays, you know this, even food from the Northeast can be thrown online, it can be sold to any market. And for this thing, value addition, packaging, these are the important things. But, he, but these are totally absent. Then lack of knowledge in the proper packaging and the transport system, lack of institutional supporting mechanism, no institutions coming forward to support this type of uh, village industries uh, based on the uh, or producing the our ethnic foods. Lack of branding, trademark in manufactured products because our we have some so many products that can be branded, that can, that can be GI tech. Hmm. Then lack of market network because market network, you know, this is the most important thing is modern days. Then lack of availability to the modern food processing equipment, technical know-how. Now, so many processing equipment are available by which if food is processed by this, so it can be made safe. Hmm. There will not be, uh, food will not be contaminated. Then lack of training for the skill development or the entrepreneurs interested in the setting up the process units. Because first of all, that's to be standardized. And if it is not standardized, how training will be important. Now, skill development, so many things are going on. So if first, if the process is standardized, then skill development may be done through training and entrepreneurship development may be uh, done with the help of this, uh, to, uh, with the help of our ethnic force. Then lack of management and the marketing skills. Now coming to the, now from the nutritional point of view, this, or if we say the nutritional significance, the fermented fish products or fish products, uh, they are having, first of all, more, antioxidant activity. Even I have seen in case of fish, the antioxidant activity of seedal and other fermented fish is more than the fresh fish. So definitely it will be more in the fermented meat huh, or smoked meat than the fresh meat. And what so many other things are there because whenever uh, the bacteria ferment this, they produce some different types of compounds you know, or they are, it, it is called bacterial metabolites, which is not present in the original food. But that is good for the health. Yeah. And that is called the nutraceuticals. Even when the FDA, USA FDA, they have seen that, seen that this type of nutraceuticals are present in the food, fermented food, or fish sauce, fish paste, or the Southeast Asia. Then they allowed this fish to come into the market. But they have given some uh, guidelines to how to prepare in the safe condition. So moreover, one more thing, that is the bioactive peptides. Because fermentation break down the protein, break down the peptides, long peptides, short peptides. The some bioactive peptides, it has been seen that some bioactive peptides, uh, this is very much good for health, even some, these are having ACE inhibitory action. That means ACE is the enzyme which is responsible for increase our blood pressure or our, uh, it is, uh, so this ACE enzyme inhibitory biopeptides are also available in the fish and the meat. So this work is going on even not only India, in the, in the throughout the world, because this type of uh, bioactive peptides, uh, it, it, yeah, it will be difficult to produce, uh, that means intentionally uh, in the laboratory. But the bacteria, whenever they produce, they uh, ferment this, they break down these large protein molecules, the small, small peptides. So some of the, these bioactive peptides actually remain within the protein molecule only. But whenever they get isolated from the protein, and they act as a, that means um, um, act uh, that uh, independently as a peptide, then they become bioactive. So the, I'm also uh, recently, my uh, field of expert, I am yeah, working this line. One of my PhD students is working. The, what type of bioactive peptides are available in CEDAW? And I am challenging these bioactive peptides uh, with the diabetic patient, even in the cell line study, I am working with even also the, with the cancer cell. Whether these bioactive peptides uh, can do something against this, uh, that means proliferation of the cancer cell. 
So these type of different types of things are available, bacterial metabolites are available in the fermented fish products, which are not available in the fresh food. Moreover, side by side, it is also we see that the, the, that should be produced very safely. Now, uh, this is the significance, and uh, due to this significance, this uh, this uh, uh, demand of this ethnic food, attention food is increasing, and it can be um, most important as a part of the tourism. Now, what is food tourism? According to World Food Travel Association, food tourism is the act of traveling for a taste of place in order to get a ah, ah, search of the place. That means food tourism, that means whenever generally travels, traveler travels, ah, they are, most of the travelers are now educated. Ah, um, they are learned before going to any place, they want to know what is available in that place. And first in the list comes to the food, food, different types of foods and beverages. So whenever a tourism is supported by the food, hmm, tourism, tourists are attracted by the food. So this type of uh, tourism is generally called the uh, food tourism. Although it was not a very idea is the recent, ideas are, I, idea was, anyway, idea was very old, but recently it has taken a, segment in the business it has taken a it has taken a segment in the business that how tourism can be improved with the food now you know there are different some or two three websites are there even tv channels are there they are only advertising the different types of food so food traveler they want to learn about the culinary styles culinary culture their customs uh, and because most of the food they have some history behind it so it was originated during the mughal period it was during it, it was invented or it, it was started when Hoon invaded Northeast India or Mongolia, like this, different types of food has different history. So this history also, history of food also attracts the travelers time to time. Moreover, the travelers, they travel here and there and before going there, uh, they are in search of the what type of foods and beverages are, are available. They want to have these products to get the experience, even to know the story behind it. So food has always become, always been a, uh, always formed a part of the tourism. Uh, but the relationship between the food and tourism has been changed significantly over the recent decades. That uh, I think uh, we know the, from the this uh, one of welcome or some well-being one of TV channels are there, where the world, all the world different foods. Now, you know, the once a time, Italy, France was popular for the different types of wine, different types of food. Nowadays, due to their ethnic food, Vietnam, then other South, other East African countries, they are attracting the tourists because they are exposing their different types of ethnic food with their history yeah, to the tourists. So tourists get attract, uh, are attracted and started visiting these type of mm, countries. Now evolution of food tourism. So whenever food has become a main motivation of the travelers uh, when choosing a destination, travelers began to spend more and more money for the unique food and beverage experience. So food tourism then started to catch as a mainstream interest, hmm. but with the help of exposure from the social media to the television show. Because you have to, people have to know the, what ethnic food you are having, hmm. what culture you are having. So that you have to first uh, expose it, then only it will attract the tourism. So now a days food tourism includes all sorts of, or full range of experience like cooking classes and where, uh, and what is the producer unit on uh, producer visit, the street foods, local on the hub, uh, then uh, touring rustic wineries, even the place where the food is prepared. So this type of thing, even not in the normal restaurant, but in the this ethnic type of restaurant. So all these things, so many things have to be developed to attract the tourism. Now, why the interest in the cuisine, food and tourism relationship? Now, you know, though everyone has to eat and it is the integral part of the tourism hmm, because it has a significant impact on the supply chain. Hmm. So culinary, this, is, uh, this may be known as culinary tourism, gastronomic tourism, and cuisine tourism. These are oriented towards to attract the tourist. So that generally, if we start with the food tourism, that can be linked to the other products, other cultural and heritage tourism. Hmm. Now, any particular significant, uh, here, yeah, rural areas, if it is having some uh, special ethnic or traditional food, uh, if they attract tourists, so that will help for that economic restructuring 
na yeah, that is also important for the nearby or neighboring urban uh, places also but tourism generally it is a labor intensive and that much skill is not required hmm. and and capital is also not not that much required but you have to uh, just only um, uh, provide you have to uh, just only advertise or advocate the what products you are being yeah, how they are produced whether it is safe or not that only will attract the tourists also there are some advantages disadvantages of the food tourism advantages are consumer exposure brand awareness even consumer will be aware about the brand and that may even they can order for the and they can go for any uh, large scale production then customer relationship better margin additional sales outlet market intelligence education of the consumer the new sales opportunities because some consumers are uh, uh, get satisfied with their product so they can take it they can take it in a business mode there will be b2b relationship also there are disadvantages in this cost of management the more capital will be required hmm. then opportunity cost the seasonality issues biosecurity risks because if it is not secure or seasonality issues because in all season all the foods are not available now northeast we know that is a economically backward region due to lack of big industries and sufficient plain lands for the agriculture so ethnic food based tourism may be included in the entrepreneurship development program now you know this uh, government job is not possible now what we can develop what we can uh, that means improve that is the entrepreneurs now what is entrepreneur entrepreneur is simply definition it is any person who business or or is a having an enterprise but entrepreneur and business something different enterprise and business is different and entrepreneur is not a businessman entrepreneur always searches for change response to it and exploit it, it as an opportunity there is a difference because entrepreneur work with the work with the innovation not the invention that the for the students i am telling that the there is a difference between invention and invention and innovation what is invention for example suppose somebody has uh, developed a motherboard of the mobile this is the innovation but you know uh, the, so, sorry this is the invention somebody invented motherboard of a mobile ah yeah, because if you feed this uh, put this motherboard in a case that it will act as a mobile board but innovation is based on this motherboard there are different application somebody is given this uh, audio video or oh, then smart then touch then digital different types of uh, all other software you add this is the innovation but basic is the invention is the mother so an entrepreneur he work with the innovation because innovation will be the unique there will be less competitor in the market but businessman whatever is available in the market if i sit with this to sell it this is the business but if i develop out of this something more out of this product if we develop some uh, with the help of different other value addition or packaging if we can develop some other more convenience product that will be my innovation there will be no competitor in the market for the time being ah huh. so so this is the difference but for the entrepreneurship they uh, they have to they have to take the risk they have to take the risk because every time they see the oh, from the existing product they look for the opportunities how to improve it hmm so they take this as a challenge so accordingly hmm they develop other products so that they can minimize the risk yeah so uh, through proper planning and the skill development so whenever there is any problems in the business but entrepreneurs see it is it as a opportunities and take it as a challenge so entrepreneurs are business so that's why entrepreneurs although it is a risk factor but most of the time they get successful because uh, there is less competition in the market now today you know the government jobs hmm, they are these are shrinking day by day due to privatization and other reasons hmm. now here one now this it is very difficult to take exam in the hall as so many student so they have utilized no stadium to take the exam hmm because jobs are limited motor work privatization is going on 
so that's why government has started startup to to support the startup to support the entrepreneurship the startup is generally been for the entrepreneurs hmm. to support the startup different types of government schemes multiplier grant scheme special incentive packages scheme the venture capital assistance scheme the credit guarantee raw material assistance infrastructure development scheme msme the credit link capital subsidy total incubation and many more and with it, in every month we are getting new new terms so the government is funding hmm. even you know this rkby rob so this also government is trying to develop startup through their uh, innovative work so now in the present day so in in the northeast if we can if we like to take our uh, attract the tourist through the through our ethnic food first we have to think in the entrepreneurial level we have to develop something uh, so innovative so that will attract the tourism so what does the region need to attract food tourism customers food tourism must be a part of the destination strategy Hmm. It will. It should give a holistic experience to the visitors. Not only the food, also the culture related to the food, the food producing unit, or the story behind this food. All these things. It will be a total holistic experience to the visitors. But it it it, it will be centered around our traditional foods and beverages. There will be close collaboration and dialogue between the every agent in the process. Food providers, tour providers, tourism. So those who are, if any entrepreneurs come with the different uh, some. changes in our traditional food then it he has to contact or keep uh, contact close contact with the food providers or tour providers tourism officials so that uh, there will be linkage between them there should be online presence our food should be promoted through online hmm. through electronic media ha uh, it has to be so the people will come to know that this type of uh, food ha uh, say is available in the megala in the mizara or like this thing. so that people uh, will uh, that means make their program accordingly and offer and promote high quality local products related to the region because all the products of our uh, community that cannot be highlighted so we have to first select which product should be highlighted uh, so that product should be high quality local product uh, and don't forget about the storytelling marketing that means each as i said that we have to find out the story behind each, each product so that will be more attractive to the tourist hmm. and always we have to look for innovation but while looking for innovation we should not lose our region's essence because people will come tourists will come due to the our region's essence ha ah, so that should not be compromised hmm because whenever i have just for my experience whenever i have presented my shidol in different parts of the country everybody was telling why don't you use a, a, a why can't you change the earthen container or you can this is shidol is ugly looking very bad smell and i said sir this is the main authenticity this is the male typical characteristics of this product hmm. if i change it people will not accept so what will be the value of my technology whatever i do i have to keep this uh that means flavor of the shidol same have to keep this uh, that means uh, uh what is called appearance of the shidol like this only that cannot be changed if it is changed the people will not accept so this is the region's essence now salient requirement for ethnic food based tourism food quality and safety first one is gmp good manufacturing practices of all the important products should be developed so that gmp should be spread to the producer through skill development and hccp i think this is one of the term related to the quality assurance the hccp has to be maintained from the in the in 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 in, in each step of its production we have to fix some control uh, we have to check uh, this quality is maintained in this control point or not this is called hccp hazard analysis critical control point then lastly if if it it, it has to get a certificate from the fssi food standard and safety authority of india fssi should certify it. so that only it can be exported nowadays you know this after get agreement any product if the producer do not follow this hccp if the producer do not have fssi that cannot be exported so this is the mandatory requirement even the you know this nowadays uh, the uh, travelers 
they are not uh, they are yeah, they are educated they are cultured uh, first of all they will ask whether yeah, do you have any fsc certificate do you follow hsccp like this, this type of question will be asked and that will be very much required for commercialization of this type of product then our local product has to be promoted hmm, in different media then presentation uh, that has to be presented in a good manner even this if our restaurants if we can set restaurants in the tabular spots if the restaurants will be like our ethnic home traditional home that will attract tourists because they will be enjoying uh, they will be feeling the warmth of a traditional heart and they are after sitting there they are getting the food of the traditional food uh, that will um, they uh, that will help to attract more and more tourists so and that and health issues because you know this now the uh, most of the uh, persons are health conscious hmm. they do not uh, like more sugar they do not like more salt they do not like more spicy so that has to be also taken care of and yeah, while innovating something for our traditional fish or adding some value to our traditional fish that things has to be taken into consideration that that should comply with the health issues because people uh, generally uh, they don't like more sugar or due to some other problem so that has to be taken into uh, mind while uh, producing or placing the products uh, before the tourist or we are making to make the we are planning to make the product for the tourist purpose that has to be taken into consideration <clears throat> then other things important is publicity is the most important thing through any web media or any tv channel you have to publicize the what foods you are eating that should be published throughout the globe so the people from different continent they will come to know now it is very easy it is not like earlier day it is very easy to advertise your uh, product hmm, through electronic media uh, throughout the world so there should be wide publicity uh, and with their health if if possible with their health benefit with their nutritional significance so they will create a demand among the tourists like they go this type of publicity say so don't leave chicken without trying this food assam travels food guide like this thing uh, uh, don't forget uh, to take this thing um, before leaving meghalaya before leaving here. like this food parts in the tourist port number of food parts has to be developed uh, with the modern facilities even some traditional hearts but one more thing everywhere safety should be maintained quality should be maintained because there is no substitute of the quality no substitute of the safety so food parts can be developed in the different tourist spots so you know this all of you know that the hornbill festival in the nagaland from i think uh, from 1st to 10th december yeah, where people from whole world tourists from whole world come and visit hmm. see their culture ah, see their uh, programs their dance their fabric their cap and most importantly their food they taste their food so why not and a great revenue comes to the government so why not this type of similar festivals are happened uh, to in the other states to showcase our rich cuisine so that has to be arranged because nowadays you know the northeast uh, economically poor uh, where income of any northeast indian is com- is generally as i uh, i read in one uh, article that is 30% less than the income of the main net person so this type of thing should be done so that will attract the tourists that will improve the economy of this region economy of this particular area that will improve the supply chain uh, that will uh, that will alarm us that will make us aware to produce quality food safe food hmm. uh, that will uh, so uh, we will come to know uh, then sangai fest sangai fest in manipur it is it, uh, it also happens in november 21 to 30 so this type of fest uh, this type of fest is not only for the this this will just attract the tourism and advertisement for the fest uh, uh, should be that means advertised throughout the world so that uh, every year people will uh, wait eagerly to come to this um, program to enjoy the northeast so this type of things will be developed because so and different entrepreneurs different entrepreneurs are through uh, this type of skill this capable awareness this capable um, uh, that means oh, mental sensitiveness can be created through the entrepreneurship development 
entrepreneurship development program so food tourism not only market food simultaneously it also supports your traditional fabrics crafts other things so tourism is a very promising industry in the northeast india so if we add food to this tourism this is a, this will be value added tourism we will be adding value to this tourism with our ethnic foods because our ethnic foods i can say this is unique in the country i can say this is the unique in the country so entrepreneurs should be encouraged with financial support it is not that only entrepreneurship but only skill development there should be financial support by the government either by state government or by the central government so that they can go for large scale production of the ethnic foods yeah. and that will be acceptable by the tourists yeah. but without compromising the essence of the region hmm. because essence of the region is the main point of attraction so uh, food has become essential in inducement in the tourism and now and nowadays this food tourism gastronomy tourism uh, culinary tourism it has become a market segment it has become a market segment in itself now there is a broad consensus the world over that food and gastronomy not only this different southeast asian countries hmm, they are coming towards to commoditize their food to attract the tourist so there is a broad consensus today that food or gastronomy tourism can contribute to the sustainable development goals in the destinations improve the value chain and there is a huge opportunity for developing this contribution in such a rural development because that will help in the rural development development of the particular area where these foods are available then for the economic growth job creation and responsible consumption and production the all our total structure total scenario of our the ethnic foods which are sometimes neglected even in the market also they do not play a good uh, a good location to sit that type of things once it will come up once it will be started attracting the uh, tourist hmm. so it will be a valued product so welcome to the northeast india so northeast india lastly northeast india is going to be the corridor of the southeast asia all of you know so such endeavor of the food based ethnic food based tourism would open a new scope for economic development of the region so welcome northeast india is safer than you think it is a paradise so many things to be unexplored uh, things still unexplored thank you please if any question sir is it over yes 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 please please i want to have some questions so, for the discussion okay sir so uh, are you continuing this uh, uh, next session also the another topic oh no this is complete complete because i have mixed both the things significance and okay yes. okay sir so thank you so much sir for highlighting the importance of uh, ethnic food starting from bamboo uh, fermented bamboo and then fermented soybean uh, fermented fish and explaining that uh, uh, nutritional profile and uh, enhancement or fortified in nutritional uh, content in the fish product and uh, all these even uh, you have touched about this financial requirement Uh, and even this uh, financial support and all these things thank you very much sir now um uh, dear participant uh, you can type your questions on the chat box or i'll give the privilege of uh, muting unmuting and then you can interact with the speaker directly sir i request you sir that uh, you can look at the chat box also okay sir what there is a one question here dr okay is there any toxic study of insect food yeah 
I think uh, Madam will answer this yet. Uh, yes, uh, uh, toxic we have studied. But the thing is that regarding the insect food, this is, there is no new uh, insect is introduced as a food. Like in the vegetable also, we find some allergy. Some people have uh, got allergy while eating uh, brinjals like that. Uh, some people uh, is not treated some type of food. Like it's, uh, it's like that only. But regarding the edible insect, because it's uh, from the century they are eating. So there is no worry about the toxicity. Like some people may get allergy, but uh, it will not harm anything because we are not introducing any new insect as a insect food. I think I answered this question. Okay. Okay, sirs. Uh, any yeah, other uh, question? Yeah, yeah. Um, just uh, <laughs> scroll down. And... Get ready. So they are asking your email ID. Uh, so if you type it in the chat box, some of them want to contact with you uh, yeah. through email. R -R -K -M -K -M -C -O at the Ma'am, are you joining? Right now, uh, uh, you can you can you join right now, ma'am? And many of them are asking Sorry. about this uh, PPT. Uh, is there any copyrighted, sir? Your notes or no, 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 information? No, no. Kind of for short no, no. notes. No, no, no. Uh, I think, can you I think, uh, give it I in send it to Madam Santi. She can forward it. I'll send okay. my to the Madam Santi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, dear, okay. dear participant, I think, sir, agreed to give some notes on it. So. Uh, we will send you through this email. Some of you are asking feedback and the link that end of the day we will announce it. Okay, so you can directly unmute and you can ask the question. Okay, I think here in the down below. Okay, sir, one more question here. Sir, how can we uh, grow organic food in kitchen garden? Organic food in kitchen garden, no any pesticide use. Yes. So, no. Sir, can you answer it or can I answer? No, I cannot answer it because I'm not expert, but it is possible. I'm not expert as in organic food. <laughs> yeah. I think you can grow this organic food as yes, a kitchen me, garden. To me, everything is organic. Animal fish is also organic. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll I think answer I'm it. Person, they can. You can grow the organic food in your kitchen garden without use because you may be growing this uh, vegetables in a limited area, maybe 20 meters square or even 40 meters square. So beyond yeah. that, that we cannot call them as kitchen garden. And whatever this household waste which you are getting, yeah. so that you can recycle it. So you are not going to buy any. You need not to buy any kind of, uh, you know, pesticide or. Uh, fungicide to manage the insect pest, whatever the things which are available in your home. And with that, you can manage it. So uh, producing vegetables in a kitchen garden is a pure organic. And using your all household kitchen waste used for the uh, nutrient, you can prepare the vermicompost and you can apply. If it is that any kind of pest and diseases are coming, you can manage with the limited resources like Say, for example, if the pests are there, sucking pests and other things. So you can use kind of anti feed and neem. Uh, neem extract you can prepare and spray, or some kind of any diseases, uh, you can uh, manage it with what you have it, available one. Like if kind of a mealy bug is there, you can prepare this a soap solution. That is not going to kill. What I want to say is uh, they may not uh, have this, uh, uh, you know, a lethal effect to the insect, but then I would say that that will kind of anti fidend effect or kind of uneasy for the insects and it may go away. So you can use the soap solution, uh, kind of surf powder, uh, you can spray on it uh, the plants and the insects will go. So without uh, any usage of the pesticide, you can manage it. So it's uh, organic.
Okay, I'll scroll down here. Uh, so how to promote uh, foreigner our ethnic food in easy method through tourism? What? Sir, another question. How to promote foreigner our ethnic food in easy method through tourism? Uh, that is the first with the advertisement. You have to advertise in the website, the tourism site, even in the world tourism site, with our product, safety of our product, nutritional significance of our product. Uh, those who are actually foreign tourists, they are regularly in contact with this type of sites to see uh, which place can be visited, what uh, foods, what beverage uh, they will be experiencing. So for this advertisement, uh, online advertisement is most important. Yeah, I also would like to add uh, how to promote to the foreigner a kind of, uh, you know, uh, group you can form it, uh, like in Nagaland, how they attract uh, this uh, Hornbill festival, attract the foreigners to come and serve this ethnic food yes, and yes. so on. Mm -hmm. A kind of, uh, or Mela you can organize mm -hmm. and publish it in national and international level. Yes. So kind of a team you can form. Mm -hmm. And where you can uh, prepare all kinds of food, not only yours, you can invite uh, different kind of villages, they can participate in that mela. Yes, uh, yes. That, that will be kind of promotion. They can come, you can enjoy the food, the traditional way of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of different kind of food, A2 is that. In that way, you can uh, attract them. And also, you can prepare some take home food also, like a dried one or fermented containers. And they can take back to their respective yes, 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 yes. so in that way you can promote and you can do it hmm. that can be valuable is, uh, and we have to organize some festivals even within uh, the region we can develop some arrange some festival time to time or in a particular time in the year so that gradually the news will spread through newspaper through other media the news will spread Yeah. Sir, the next question is, sir, please tell what are the three measures that should be followed in visiting Northeast India, like <laughs> travel permission, accommodation to the way. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A few states, uh, uh, they have inner lane per permit. Yes. So you can visit the respective uh, state, like if you want to visit Arunachal. Mm. So you go to the Arunachal uh, website and uh, start applying through online and payment yes. everything if you done it for a limited period they will give it like in uh, in other states some of the states they they're not having this ilp you mm -hmm. can directly you can go so yes. you can visit to the respective state of uh, for the guidance that will not be a problem like, uh, yeah. what is yeah. uh, if you don't have any problem uh, that you can directly come to the assam so you can stay uh, for some days so uh -huh. Nairobi is super. Uh, so other places like Manipur initially has uh, started regarding the LP. So you can take the permission mm -hmm. from the state government, and the EP you will get it. So there is no issue. Any uh, where in the seven eight state you can visit whenever you want. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sir, recently I had been to Assam Agriculture University for some training. During that time, I tasted a fermented fish and fermented tree bean. It was very nice. But uh, there, uh, I have seen one practice of eating fermented areca nut. Uh, I asked what is the reason that nobody told about this, why they ferment the areca nut. And it was not, uh, when I take sm took smell, it was very bad. I don't know why people there, they start eating fermented areca nut. May I know the reason, sir, scientific reason behind that? Actually, uh, the main purpose is the preser preservation. Uh, you can store uh, by fermenting more than one year, two years. But yes, bad uh, smell is coming while uh, preserving. But uh, when it is uh, this one clear, uh, and then... Uh, there is no this one bad smell <laughs> coming from that, and the one thing that it's softened uh, this one also erica nut also. Uh, so some people like because it's softened. So the and one more uh, this one other part of the note is means like Manipur uh, there 
the product, uh, there is no, the, whatever we are purchasing from the outside. So that means the main reason, that is the source purpose we are doing the preservation. Yeah, the customer. Okay. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, yeah. This is, uh, this is Harshwadhan Sir John. So my question is, uh, uh, is about uh, bamboo shoots. Uh, is, uh, because in uh, Northeast areas, uh, there was uh, bamboo shoots, like wet bamboo shoots, Shoots and dry bamboo shoots uh, are available, but, but in other uh, part of country, the, it, it is not availability of bamboo shoot. Uh, most of the people don't know about bamboo shoot. Uh, so is there any chance or scope for food processing in bamboo shoots? Sir? That's all for you. Sir, can you answer it? Yes, a bamboo. As I said, the bamboo shoots are here fermented here, but there is no commercial organization to make it a large scale, adding value through packaging so it can be exported or sold like this. But gradually, this is starting. Gradually, this type of entrepreneurship is, are coming. Uh, the fermented baby shoots, they are then after fermentation, they are making, they are drying it and they are packaging it so that that can be sold to the other markets. Uh, so this type of things are coming gradually. I can uh, I can add in this point. So yes, the, our one of our speaker that is Dr. Bedamni, I think you can get uh, from her. And nowadays that so many online shopping has started. Now packaging of this bamboo suit already. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's available. Even uh, like uh, some websites are there that is around by 2020 and others are there. So you can go to this website directly. You search for the for indigenous food of Manipur like that, you'll find the packaging this bamboo soup. So now it is uh, already started. So like uh, one of the best, uh, this one, I want to cite one uh, example that yeah, in Jiska, Bangor. Jiska that, site I, is also there. Jiska. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I see Bangor also one uh, on Saturday in the canteen. They have this one, uh, one dish is prepared from the bamboo soup and people, students are uh, this one crazy uh, to purchase that one. Like that in different part of the state, uh, country, it's already started. Okay, next question. Yeah, next question. Yeah, Sarah has given this, uh, PPT also, please download it. And he has given his email also. Please download it. Most of our, okay, most of our ethnic food are not uh, standardized regarding its hygiene and procedure. So how can we help the producer in uh, standard uh, producer in standard product yes earlier uh, that standardization is not there now people are aware about it and people are educated about its uh, nutrient profile and everything so now it is uh, improving uh, it is improving nowadays earlier yes i agree your point that earlier our uh, traditional ethnic food are not standardized now it is coming in the better set you can find many uh, this on packeted products Okay, is, is, any question there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so next question is, uh, whether the traditional food are being exported or not? If yes, then which product are being exported most to which countries? Dr. Yes, Sarin. The export of our fermented product has not yet started in that scale, but there is potential. Our fermented product has got enough potential to be exported, but for this thing, First of all, the FSS certification, this quality control certification is mandatory. Without this thing, product cannot be exported. So that's why I am telling that first of all, good manufacturing practice, then safe production, that should be developed following HCCP and to have the certificate from the FSSI, where that, uh, that will be the requirement uh, for uh, exporting any product from the Northeast. Okay. So the next question is, uh, are there any home microbes or bacteria present in the fermented product which can have a negative effect on health? Yes, generally, if it is uh, fermented in a proper way, the pH remains uh, 
less than 6.5. 5.5 to 6.5 or 6 to 6.5. Generally, in this pH, any pathogen cannot survive. But if fermentation is not done properly, if the before fermentation, uh, some traders they started selling it to get benefit because fermentation it takes some time. Uh, so that if the pH remains more than 6.5 or more than 7, that it may harbor some pathogens. But generally, it, if it is less than 6.5 or 6, that they, they do not harbor any harmful microbes and fermented food are mostly the comprise of the lactobacillus you know the lactobacillus is the health benefit of, of of the lactobacillus they are now treated as the probiotic microbes but that depends on the ph yeah one last question is uh, permitted and dinesh uh, you want to ask question Okay, so I think, uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, for your valuable time and giving us your valuable time and enlightening this ethnic food, uh, more specific on fish and other fermented product. Thank you so much, sir. We are moving to the next session. Uh, yeah, the next speaker is... Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is uh, Dr. Uh, Sharda uh, Marte, Associate uh, Project Director, uh, Dinial Research Institute in New Delhi, India. Uh, I request our Associate Professor and uh, Organizing Secretary of this uh, 10th webinar, Dr. T. Sandibala, to welcome her. Good morning, Madam uh, Strada Marathi. So there is a slight change. Uh, I attended, so I'm very thankful that Madam, Madam, you agreed to be on your lecture. So, uh, dear participant, I would like to highlight uh, Madam's biodata, update biodata. So, Madam Strada Marathi is a health science dietitian. So, she is a dietitian of various clinics, uh, various four person, and uh, for she also serves as a dietitian for community nutrition, and uh, she uh, also acts as a counselor of various uh, patients and others uh, community member for the course of food health and fitness, and she is the founder of the uh, uh, Food Greek and Web Portal for children and uh, parents regarding health, nutrition, and wellness. And uh, she uh, uh, currently she is working as a associate project director with Dindayal Research Institute, New Delhi. And so she will be highlighting on the, uh, our second theme, uh, that is the nutritional health benefit and immune boosting. So, Madam, uh, I hand over the platform to you to continue your lecture, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shanti Bala. Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yeah, yeah, it's audible. Okay, okay, thank you. So good morning to all participants, dignitaries, and I'm very much thankful to College of Horticulture and Forestry, uh, PC Ghat. And uh, today I would like to emphasize on uh, the nutritional health benefits and immunity boost boosting uh, pigments or nutrients which are present in our food, daily food. So the topic is ethnic food. And as we all know, our India is a diverse country. And uh, wait. Madam, will you share the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Screen? yeah. Yeah. So, uh, as we all know, India is a multicultural and diverse country, and food is a very important marker as our ethnic identity. Uh, this, we have to preserve it. We have got it from our ancestors, and we have to take it forward for the newer generation. And the, definitely the biodiversity is also very much important. So what is happening now? The migrations and merging has improved. People are going all over 
our country. They are moving. And so the history, ethnicity, memories, we are sharing with each other. Each recipe of our Indian continent tells some story behind it, which is related to our traditions, then cultural inheritance of the changes born out of the travels. And we have adapted also to it. So like when you go to Maharashtra, you get Maharashtrian Thali. In Maharashtra also, there are like different uh, places where you get diversity in that particular state. Kathiawadi Thali, Marwadi Thali, Khasi Thali, Himachadi Thali. There are so many Thalis. So we our food is around our Indian Thali. What is ethnic food? Sir already told us ethnic food originating from a heritage and culture of an ethnic group who use their knowledge of local ingredients of plants and or animal sources. It is always authentic. Food is a social and cultural market which holds our society together. Underutilize this ethnic food, we will lose our culinary heritage. So we have to come up with some ideas, innovations to take this up forward. There are so many lost recipes and thankful to our media also or uh, TV channels also who are also working on this. Ecotourism, agro-tourism giving us opportunity to work on this. Movement and interaction of people also help us to know the different traditions and cultural possibilities in India. The sense of respect of traditional value and culture will serve it increase link the enjoyment of dining to local. Whenever we travel, if we are getting that local atmosphere, local food, our travel would become very, very interesting and we will start enjoying it. Making this the standard of food culture of the region. Imagine we are traveling to Arunachal Pradesh tourism, then ethnic restaurant we are get going, Previous speaker already told if these restaurants are with your traditional uh, housing, traditional uh, possible things which you can show it to travelers, serving delicacies, which will be in inexpensive definitely, traditional, fresh, local, healthy agricultural produce, tourists experience that enjoyment and friendship. So they will get the true essence of your food culture then definitely give confidence in their life. Pride to people of the region, ultimate enjoyment and friendship might develop. So this meaningful act of travel bestows happiness upon the traveler. Promoting traditional food cultural in presentable manner on the menu card is also very, very important. As we all know, Arunachal Pradesh staple food is rice. Uh, and these delicacies are made with bamboo shoots, pickles, fermented products like rice beer, which is known as a palm, chura sabji, which is fermented cheese made up of yak milk or cow's milk, meat dishes, specifically mithun meat, along with chicken, fish, and other foods, non veg foods. So, this definitely will improve our culinary taste. Ethnic food. Culturally, it is very much strong and it comes from particular communities. Their indigenous knowledge and of food production, vast nutritional qualities, microbial diversity associated with fermented food as genetic resources, source of income generation related to tourism and enjoyment of dining. Usually what happens whenever we speak to our grandparents, Definitely, they will not aware of the nutritional profile because this is a modern science, but when to eat, why to eat, which festival, which food to be eaten, this all they have learned it through their experiences and definitely according to the season. So this will give us the importance of our ethnic food. I will give you one example. Sihagad Fort is one of the known fort in Pune, which is in Maharashtra, which height is 430 feet from sea level. Usually people 
go there for hiking trekking and since many years this is one of the chhatrapati shivaji sports so there now whenever we go after climbing such a height we are so tired but when we go up first thing we get is buttermel or curd which soothes the uh, whatever you have uh, experienced the uh, uh, while climbing up it soothes us and gives us pleasure of doing that trekking activity there is particular dish which is served on top of the uh, fort that is pitla bhakri pitla is chana dal chickpea flour curry and bhakri is typical jawar sorghum flour roti along with that a spicy thecha which is made up of uh, green chilies then onion fritters like uh, uh, onion pakoras along with dahi again some ran meva which is wild foods available in and around the uh, mountain hill hill areas and the uh, people from the villages they pluck fresh and they come and sell so that is like beer amla in mango season raw mangoes cucumber these kind of things are served so definitely you will understand the importance of native food local food along with their nutritional qualities as we all know millets are very good they are high in fiber they are high in uh, ma- vitamins minerals many things which will definitely help trekkers to understand and enjoy their activity next is food nutrition nutrients and its nutrition what is food food is the basic necessity of human life healthy traditional local nutrition uh, nutritious food achieves individuals optimum health the food you eat is a source of nutrients and if we are getting these essential nutrients from your ethnic food nothing like like it so nutrients are the subject the substances found in food that keep your body functioning why why your uh, body needs nutrients definitely to fuel energy help to grow repair itself maintain basic bodily functions boost immunity ability to fight infections we can say army of our body nowadays because of pandemic and all current situation immunity has become at the core so definitely with this all inclusive diet we can boost our immunity nutrition as i told you already it's a study of food and nutrients good nutrition keep your body nourished and physically active regular meal timings good quality food and control quantity is very important whenever we travel state wise also we know there are there are some customs and traditions for people staying there and they follow certain timings certain uh, quality of food also in cities definitely it is very much different nowadays because of uh, western influence we are uh, we are deviating from our current uh, our ethnic diet pattern and the consequences we are already seeing it so again we need to go back to our roots local foods are as per the native agricultural produce climatic conditions seasons they are best basically human body requires proteins carbohydrate fats as macronutrients vitamins minerals dietary fiber and water to achieve health and fitness goals throughout lifespan now we can uh, discuss about the nutritional properties also because with this basics you will understand why ethnic food is important the main macronutrient in our daily diet is carbohydrate carbohydrate you are you all are aware there are simple carbohydrates complex carb- carbohydrates they provide dietary fiber also and definitely the complex carbohydrates the quality of carbohydrates is very very important to combat our health problem uh, carbohydrate gives you energy it has again protein sparing action stored as a glycogen in liver and muscle to supply energy sources we all know all the whole cereals grains 
then vegetable starchy uh, roots and tubers then fruits and dry fruits nuts sugar jaggery honey milk and organ meal proteins is the next uh, nutrient which is again a macronutrient which is needed by our body lot of amount the required amount minimum requirement per kg body weight is 0.8 g to 1 g why protein is important because our entire body is made up of cells and each cell requires protein so from our hair to nail so from head to toe our body needs protein for growth and maintenance then it synthesizes many body uh, many enzymes also hormones also body fluids also which are important for daily function then sub, uh, the muscle is made up of protein bone is made up of protein and again it gives energy as a secondary source so sources are milk and milk products pulses meat fish poultry and oil seeds nuts lipids or fats definitely this fats are also very very important many a times we come across nowadays zero fat diet low fat diet but if we see our ancestors they were using lot of good quality fats in their body when you are eating non veg definitely you get good quality fats which is very very helpful to keep all your bodily functions optimum level so oil first of all it supplies heat or energy to the body then it it is a insulator so basically each and every organ is insulated inside our body with fat layer so it supports the bodily functions and organs also essential fatty acids are important for our cell membranes which regulates our cholesterol levels which regulates our uh, insulin levels hormonal levels definitely it gives satiety and feeling of fullness adds flavor to food it carries fat soluble vitamins like adek cholesterol synthesis like sex hormones and adrenal steroids hormone in your body so definitely fat is also very very important the sources are all vegetable seeds which we use variety in india ghee butter margarine lard vanaspati then in fruits avocado is high in fat olives are high in fat milk and milk products fish poultry eggs etc next comes to the micronutrients so micronutrients are also important like vitamins and minerals vitamins are again divided into two that is fat soluble vitamin and water soluble vitamin these are micronutrients but usually we tend to uh, miss this point a lot because our indian diet are the staple is carbohydrates and because of carbohydrates we tend to eat more of carbohydrates and we uh, less we uh, the intake of vegetables fruits and different different uh, vitamin and mineral rich foods we tend to eat less so vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e and k they have a particular function in the body like vitamin a is uh, associated with vision and skin vitamin d is associated with absorption of calcium and phosphorus which is very very much important for our bone health helps in growing skeletal uh, structures also vitamin e is acts as antioxidant nowadays because of uh, environmental problems or uh, nutritional uh, cropping system problems we have developed uh, we have developed inflammation in our body so antioxidants becomes very important so it they fight free radical from our body then vitamin e also combines with structural elements like phospholipids cholesterol triglycerides to keep them in normal range vitamin k is important factor of blood clotting so all this vitamins we will get from dark uh, colored vegetables dark colored fruits like tomatoes then uh, we definitely get it from different variety of uh, fruits all over india we get so many varieties of fruits which we can incorporate in our daily diet then milk uh, butter uh, non veg food all are very very good sources of vitamins that is fat soluble vitamins water soluble vitamins again vitamin c 
I would like to emphasize vitamin C here itself because it's a immunity booster. Vitamin C also it maintains body uh, builds the bone and it helps our hemoglobin uh, formation of hemoglobin and develops red blood cells which absorbs iron. So having iron uh, in your body, so blood uh, constituent is also very important. It is a good uh, for wound healing and it heals bone fractures also, improves immunity and fight common cold and infections also. So nowadays with this pandemic again, everyone, all dietitians are emphasizing on vitamin C intake, increase your vitamin C intake, increase your uh, vitamin C rich fruits, vitamin C rich foods in your diet, daily diet. It again acts as a stress reliever. So you will understand with this pandemic, we definitely have some of the other stresses in our mind. So this will also help you to get rid of it, promote growth also. So vitamin C is very, very important. And again, from the uh, point of like state wise also, if we see vitamin C, Amla is best source, which is available all over, but wherever, whichever uh, state you are, it is very important to have those local sources like uh, in South India, uh, definitely the more use of uh, tamarind than Northeast, there will be some uh, high uh, vitamin C fruits or vegetables available like colocasia leaves. Colocasia is very high, rich in uh, vitamin C. Chilies are rich in vitamin C. So these spices and condiments we use usually in our diet daily, which uh, in ethnic diet also we have them. The next uh, set of water soluble vitamin is vitamin B1, B2, B3. These are again B complex vitamin we say it as and for the bodily, normal bodily functions, these are also important and which we get from our daily diet plan. Vitamin B5, vitamin B6, vitamin B12. Nowadays, again, we see a lot of vitamin B12 deficiencies and why it is because we have left our ethnicity back and we are chasing Western lifestyle. So this definitely we have to stop it somewhere. Minerals, again, minerals are micronutrients. These are like calcium, phosphorus. Calcium and phosphorus and magnesium, three vitamins are very important for our bone functioning. And if our bones are stronger, then our structure is strong. We, uh, we will have good bodily functions and we will not attack by any physical difficulties. Iron, iron is again very important mineral. Anemia is prevalent in India, everyone knows. Simply, I feel that whenever we are having any uh, food in our diet, we have to see the absorption capacity of that particular nutrient. For example, iron needs vitamin C for its maximum absorption. So suppose if we are having any iron rich uh, food in your diet, we have to see to it that we are having vitamin C supplement also. Like usually leafy vegetables, when we, whenever we are having leafy vegetables, we add tamarind pulp to it, we, add, we uh, sprinkle uh, lemon juice on, onto it. So that enhances or improves the iron absorption capacity. So these combinations also are very important on the absorption part. Sodium, potassium, chlorine, definitely these are important minerals. Sodium, potassium, they uh, see the cell activity also and exchange nutrients across the cell membrane, which helps for muscle contraction, for uh, definitely for the nerve impulse also. And it maintains the fluid balance. So everyone knows our body is made up of 72% of water. And if we are well hydrated, our bodily functions also work very well. So sodium, potassium, chlorine are also important. They are available in many different uh, sources like meat, fish, poultry, eggs, milk, pickles, fermented foods we have, some processed food like chutneys and all also we have, then legumes, vegetables, these are available. The unknown 
you can say like these are very important uh, minerals also but we don't uh, monitor them so well but they unknowingly come from our healthy diet pattern sulfur iodine fluorine copper manganese these are zinc zinc is again micro mineral it is needed by your body in very less quantity but very very important mineral it it is a component of insulin hormone and many other enzymes helps in wound healing needed for making protein and genetic material has a function in test per perception normal fetal development so now if we if we can correlate that covid patients are given zinc supplement why because this hampers test perception and improves it later part production of sperm normal growth and sexual maturation immunity system and health so seafoods oysters liver meat eggs are the sources of zinc next comes to the water water is again a very very important ingredient or component of food this transport nutrients carries away waste moistens eyes mouth nose hydrate skin forms main components of body fluid act as an insulator protect against heat exhaustion lubricate joint help with digestion so well hydrated body is very very important yes the intake of water changes according to the climate climatic conditions where you are uh, in which part of india you are it changes dietary fiber it is very very important it gives bulk to your body promotes the movement of food material through our digestive system keeps normal bowel movement lowers cholesterol level controls blood sugar level sources are like whole grain cereals pulses nuts and oil seeds fruits and vegetables green leaf vegetables beans peas and other legumes now coming back to ethnic food see indian food comprises a variety of food which is needed for good health the traditional indian thalis if you can see it's a blend of color texture aroma presentation and traditional layout that traditional layout is so appealing that it starts just by looking at our food uh, textures and colors our digestive uh, juices start secreting and we feel hungry and we start eating and definitely this will help us to be at our optimal nutritional level the food should always suit local dna which is climate resilient consumes less water does not need artificial fertilizers does not need pesticides it nourishes back the soil also soil fertility also and provides nutritious produce this is very very important indian food culture is diverse with its religion geography climatic conditions and traditions this also influences the cooking practices our cooking practices age old cooking practical practice uh, practices are also important which help us to retain nutrient properties in food if we are cooking in a proper way the uh, intake according to the season and local produce becomes very very important there is one say food is the instrument of nourishment nutrition is the act of using it what is the importance it is very very healthy very very tasty supports immunity so when when i was explaining the nutrients definitely you can correlate which food from which state gives you all this nutritious food and thus supports the immunity inflammation brain function cognition and several other functions in your body we must go to our roots back the way our grandparents were eating much healthier ethnic food the kind of wisdom they had actually connected our body soul and mind indian ethnic food always begins with preparing it and ends with eating it each ethnic food dish would be presented with its own story its history and nutritional benefits indian thali usual thali is comprised of cereal pulses as a staple food or non vegetarian items as a staple food everyone eats eggs 
uh, uh, non vegetarians usually eat eggs poultry meat and fish vegetarians consume milk and milk products for their protein source the intake of vegetable and fruit should be two third of our entire plate to give vitamins and minerals and which will definitely give pigments color pigments to fight our infections better if everyone knows in india we use ghee a lot and this is clarified butter and in ayurveda also ghee has given a health benefit oils oils are also important when we go to uh, north we use mustard oil when we go to south we use coconut oil in middle part of india groundnut oil till oil is used use of sugar was less but the use of honey jaggery unrefined sugars which is called as khand is healthy and it we used to have it before all modern processed foods are very high in fat sugar and salt so while thinking of the new upcoming starter these all minute things we have to keep it in mind to develop a ethnic food hub with nutritional nutritious background regional food is very very important i would like to explain you this with some examples like ragi it's a finger millet ragi is very uh, famous in middle part of india you can say or south, southern part of india like karnataka maharashtra and the uh, tribes over there they have it in daily uh, pattern diet pattern so usually iron everyone knows it is high in iron fiber then protein carbohydrates calcium and definitely the first food which is given to a child also it is ragi malt which is malted and pre digested food which this kid can have and which will give all the nutrients also which is mixed with milk so milk again gives you protein and uh, thus it becomes a complete meal so there is one katkari adivasi community in coastal maharashtra they eat this ragi roti with black sesame seed chutney the and garlic is added to it so as garlic is a medicinal uh nutraceutical you can say also rich in vitamin c b6 and manganese so th th this is the ethnic food which boost your immune system millets we can call it as forgotten uh, cereals or millets now because many of our uh, part of the countries eat uh, rice maximum or wheat but we have to again revive our millets millets are very very important in our daily diet so government of india celebrated 2018 as national year of nutri cereals another example i can give tamil nadu tamil nadu state has 250 varieties of rice with different color texture and import, uh, importance of but we use basmati only one variety which we have to change it there are different millets like bajra kodo kutki can use it for combating def deficiency diseases so these importance of millet is also very very good and we can come up with some products which like nowadays it is available puffed jowar is available puffed uh, bajra is available puffed ragi is available or the uh, suji suji we know rava which is called broken wheat so that is only of broken wheat nowadays suji we get it uh, sorghum suji wheat also we get uh, suji also we get it so different dishes can be prepared and we can make use of it all over india these millets one important example i would like to put forward to you how the ethnic food is important so everyone must be knowing it himachali dham himachali dham reflects the diversity in the culture and tradition of each region of himachal pradesh famous dhams are like kangri dham mandiyali dham chambiyali dham bilaspuri dham 
This is because of the plethora of flora and fauna. The recipe, when we go uh, one by one, you will understand the importance of nutritious food and its association with your health. So basically, this dham preparation starts previously. The main ingredient of the uh, dham is mustard oil, spices, curd, and uh, uh, this is mixed together. And what happens when you are mixing this curd with spices and mustard oil? This becomes easy for the digestion, which improves the gut bacteria, and works as a probiotic. So we don't have to take any medicine or any nutraceutical as a probiotic. This is the natural thing which are which we are getting it. Usually, dham is uh, devoid of garlic and onion and tomatoes. The typical menu. It's a course menu we can say. It starts with rice. The main dish of dham is moong dal, green gram. rajma and chole or chole it is which is known as madra gravy with khoya and dahi in ghee again there is a complementing so cereal pulp and milk and milk product is mixed together which improves protein quality and ultimately the absorption also thus it becomes a good quality absorbs well and digest well in your body This is followed by the dish cooked by mixture of three dals, moong, urad, and masoor, called mash. This combination of complementary nutritional elements can be found in the 1,000-year-old Aryan literature, and it was consumed by them also. The dal is made up by dhuni technique, where is the mustard oil is poured on a piece of coal, burning coal, and it is placed in the dal and covered for some time. which gives you the smoky flavor as we all know our indian diets are made up of six tastes that is bitter sour sweet pungent so these all tastes we can see in this one dham itself likewise we will have different different dishes all over india we have to uh, study them we have to understand its nutritional significance and how to incorporate as a ethnic food in coming years the dham ends with the meetha bhat which is again or meet mithe made up of bundi and sweet rice dishes in kangri dham are devoid of artificial colors and are perfect blends of oils and spices essential for healthy body when we talk about spices each and every indian kitchen has spice box and that spice box little small amount of spice also we when we use it has a strong medicinal value so this uh, dham menu is also served in vedic manner and on the patal that is leaves so again we are connected to the nature so this is one example i would like to tell you about how ethnic food is associated with our nutrition and ultimately the health use of wild vegetables we have strong biodiversity and uh, variety of wild veg vegetables are available these wild vegetables are literally power house of micronutrients essential vitamins and minerals phytonutrients antioxidants dietary fibers the diverse range is from curry leaves to colocasia leaves when we incorporate these treasured vegetables in our diet it makes so healthy and gives us ability to fight infections and inflammations in nandurbar district in maharashtra state vana bhaji utsav that is wild vegetable uh, utsav is celebrated every year to pass on this traditional wisdom to the next generation some of the vegetables can be seen only in the monsoon season so people definitely make use of them and have it for the health benefit in other parts of country also we will have we can see these kind of uh, uh, important festivals so i already mentioned and this helps us to know our culture also and keep up with the traditions also rajasthan use lot of dried vegetables rajasthan is desert and in that desert very few uh, months they get fresh vegetables 
but they usually dry all these vegetables keep it for the coming year and use it on in on a daily basis we always hear a proverb an apple a day keeps the doctor away but this should not be the case in india apple let it be in himachal pradesh mangoes let it be in uttar pradesh maharashtra other places last year we went to nagaland and i really relished on pineapple over there after coming to delhi i couldn't get that taste over here at all so we have to keep up that also another example we can take it from north it north east itself traditional cure food products like fermented dried smoked bamboo shoots are processed and prepared by the ethnic group in tripura sir already told about dried fishes of fermented fishes also wild vegetables leaf fruit fish are processed and prepared by this group so these all things we can incorporate in different recipes culinary styles and we have to give back to community these are not only the nutritious but also cures number of seasonal and chronic health problems like common ailments diabetes hypertension heart diseases fermentation process makes food digestible and absorbable in good uh, microbial flora it enhances the nutritional value improves the flavor and texture antioxidants and antibacterial compounds and stimulate probiotic functions of good health so this makes palatable and tastier which will suit our palate fish product known as shidal keeps themselves away from fatal diseases like malaria the most popular raw material for preparation of cure food items are colocasia leaves rice bamboo shoots leafy vegetables and fish so the take home message shift from underutilized to mainstream nutritionally balanced local traditional seasonal scientifically validated knowledge implementation best cooking practices make our ancestral roots strong for our next generations bridging gap between multi educational institutions like agriculture nutritional science dietetics food and restaurant industry where we can go come together go hand in hand and improve on our traditions sustainability in natural resource management thank you so much yeah madam uh, thank you so much uh, for highlighting you know importance of uh, since uh, you are a nutrition nutritionist and uh, highlighting importance of uh, vitamins and mineral so we are very busy in this world always you know love to eat uh, carbohydrate based one and then we forget to you know take up the minerals and uh, vitamins and um, minor nutrients so it is so essential for our immune system you have rightly said that the importance of uh, uh, vitamins and minerals and their role in the immune system and body built up and many other things um so uh, this ethnic food uh, many of uh, even young children also i could observe they love to eat the tasty food and though ethnic food are rich in vitamin c you rightly said that uh, chilies which are rich in vitamin c and uh, also this colocasia uh, rich in vitamin c not only this colocasia and rich in uh, steroids and that uh, can help and protect this uh, uh, viruses also and kind of uh, some of uh, um, uh, even uh, this mushrooms which have the selenium which is more important to boost this immune system and uh, even you rightly said about the uh, zinc it is also helps you know fighting with the viruses and you know children's and babies if they get viral infection the doctor advise uh, this thing and uh, many more nutrients you have rightly said now one thing i want to know being in this to promote this one uh, one aspect is a taste people will look for nowadays uh, it's a common observation what i want to say look for taste and uh, most of the ethnic foods are you know they are not taste uh, like kind of um, yeah not a pleasant uh, wood or sometime traditional food or their taste 
and then their aroma is quite different. Some of them are good, uh, no doubt it. Uh, but now, how to? My question is, how to? Uh, you know, this uh, the, to give us a food to the young uh, youngsters, even the childrens. How we can uh, you know change our any uh, you know fortified farm or how to um, avoid you know kind of offensive odor or kind of things. And the next question is. Uh, if, even if I uh, uh, visited uh, Thailand and other, I love to eat this ethnic food. Uh, after eating, uh, many times I feel that, uh, you know, indigestion problem. The same mm -hmm. case, if Americans are, uh, you know, from UK, people are coming to India, they love to eat Indian food. And they say to, this is a spicy, little bit spicy. And, you know, we cannot able to adjust this. So when we go to other countries also have same kind of problem. Now, my co second question is, how we can avoid uh, such a kind of, uh, you know, indigestion or kind of uh, uh, sensitive to stomach. Uh, so how we can avoid that? One? Okay. Uh, the first question I would like to answer first, uh, as you were telling about the taste. So I will not agree with this. The ethnic food is most tasty. Okay. Only the thing is the how we are uh, presenting towards uh, or you can say the marketing, best marketing practices. Because all the Western food, you can tell me uh, is that burger is so in interesting. Why? And how, why uh, kids are going towards it. So on the same basis, we can definitely develop our own dishes and provide pre uh, presentably uh, to them like herbs. I was telling about the uh, micronutrients. So there are so many herbs around in uh, our forest and we can make use of it for that taste. Uh, just we add oregano on uh, pizza and it becomes tastier. Why? So similarly in India also, we have so many ingredients which we can incorporate. Simple salad of cucumber, tomato also, if we sprinkle pepper powder, salt, that too, black salt or pink salt, and squeeze lemon on, on it, it becomes tasty. So the presentation and uh, innovation comes here while developing a uh, dish which is ethnic also and which will suit to uh, our people. Uh, and the second part, second question I would answer, that is the indigestion thing. Uh, so basically we uh, have to find out the things like uh, first of all, we should eat local seasonal and traditional food. And when people coming from abroad to here, they are not used to this spicy nature. Outside, you were telling about Thailand and all. Many a times what happens in those countries, the uh, refined flour uses more. And if in our country, if we are having whole wheat uh, atta also, which is not refined. So we are not used to eating those kind of food. That's why indigestion might happen. I hope uh, I gave you the answer. Yeah, thank you, madam. And uh, dear participant, if you have a question and you just answer it, there are uh, some questions in the chat box, madam. How to promote uh, forest or wild food in a mainstream food? Yeah, uh, as I explained you about the um, Vanabhaji Mohotsa. So these kind of festivals no, from we can promote. I remember three one conference on the subject of so we all know India is so for that purpose, you rightly said voted. And for this, uh, in Gujarat also, I know there are some communities and NGOs. They are working. They uh, uh, they do the processions, uh, village to village, and they promote these uh, wild forest uh, uh, foods. And they make like, for example, mahua, mahua flower, fruit, everything. They add it in normal preparations. Like they made muthi out of it. They make uh, khakra out of it. They make different, different theplas out of it or uh, these kind of food items, which are in daily uh, diet platter, they add these forest foods and 
tell them so this is also one way to improve on our strategy what is your opinion about the refined oil refined oil uh, there are different uh, uh, researches are still going on but filtered oil and uh, the age old oils are very good refined oil they those are promoted as tasteless and odorless and fumes they don't uh, form uh, but in body it gives bad fatty acids and because of that also many mm, non communicable diseases like diabetes hypertension they are increasing so as far as possible try to stick to the local or uh, whatever the state wise the produce is there as i told you like usually it used to be four major oils we used like groundnut oil mustard oil then uh, til oil sesame oil and coconut oil in india and of course ghee and these are the best for our health purpose madam the next question is um ma'am per day how much nutrient are we required by a person and which is the best oil for our health yeah so oil i already told this four oil plus ghee is best and uh, um, per day nutrient requirement person to person it differs and it depends on your age which gender you are what physical activity you uh, do daily and uh, what is your body composition like whether it is uh, fat percentage is more or your muscle mass is more or uh, this this will depend on the so requirement changes person to person and there are calculations for each and every person according to their height and weight so it will be really good if you can uh, get it done from the professional the next question is uh, compressed oil should be use it or not and how uh, tree bone oil can be utilized for food grade purpose Compre compressed oils that is filtered oil they basically they retain the process uh, in from compressing uh, oil seeds they retain the essential uh, ingredients or nutrients in that particular seed oil seeds so they will be healthier and uh, tree bone oil frankly speaking i am not aware of this so i would like to go back and study what it is what are the what are the vegetables uh, which are underrated or ignored but have a high nutritive value to fight against malnutrition okay um uh, simplest thing is niger seed or alsi alsi if you know alsi seed those when you uh, grow at home also and the greens the greens of that are very very useful and other uh, few few vegetables are very short duration like uh, only for the monsoon season so these vegetables are also very nutritious and if we can incorporate them in our daily uh, soups or salads that will also give you like methi also methi in fact uh, it is seasonal uh, green leafy vegetables but it is dried and kept also which north indians usually use it uh, for their preparations in curries in parathas they add so these kind of uh, uh, dried vegetables also we can use a lot so whichever uh, vegetable is available in that particular state can be dried nowadays you are getting uh, just uh, pre mixes for the vegetables which are dried added spices into it you just have to add boiled uh, uh, water to it and make that vegetable so like colocasia leaf vegetables also in south india colocasia leaf vegetable is very nutritious and made but uh, all other part it is not available like because of migrating 
many state people are staying in different different states and they feel that like my own state food i i must get it so these these will be the things where you can come into picture for the new startups and produce dried food, uh, dried vegetables also and uh, market them and sell them for the benefit madam that another question is slightly related to nutritional mm -hmm. like uh, why nowadays young people are getting gray hair Yeah, I think more bothers. Yeah, <laughs> gray hair. I am also having so <laughs> you can see. It. Uh, so basically, there are many things. Not only the diet pattern has changed, the lifestyle has changed. In cities, lifestyle has become very fast. And another main issue is pollution. By increasing pollution, gray hairs are also uh, you can see it. And uh, uh, the agricultural produce also. we are big, we have become very monoculture like we don't use uh, tradition that is the main purpose i think for the webinar should be like ethnic food with variety if we incorporate in our daily uh, lives be it in village be it in uh, semi uh, uh, urban areas or urban areas it is very very important to uh, see our diet pattern and work on it uh, daily because children also uh, they are more exposed to junk food and junk food is high in sugar salt oil now government is again or dietitians again working on it to reduce the manufacturing uh, process itself the uh, presence of salt sugar and oil so high fat high salt high oil uh, high fat uh, high sugar produces are to be banned in schools also and these steps are taking care and i hope in coming generations these will change because kids are uh, like they are uh, seeing the advertisements uh, daily the media exposure is more and they are going into uh, wrong food habits that is also one uh, important reason madam can i add a few points in this uh, the question was asked by i think uh, uh, curious uh, about the gray hair so i want to add a few points here mm -hmm. though we eat a lot of uh, nutrition but then absorption is the main problem yeah yeah so it's uh, happening nowadays young children always you know hurry bari they should sit and then uh, you know calmly nowadays uh, children are watching tv and eating mothers are forcefully eating even adults also you know kind of entertainment eat watching tv and eating number one number two because of that your absorption process is affecting number two even if you take the nutritional it is not mobilizing into your body until unless you have a specific requirement nowadays even this oil bath is missing people are not exposed to sunlight if they go out of sunlight i'll become very dark so they have to apply this oil and uh, if you expose it to sunlight to early morning vitamin uh, d is a uh, pro vitamin d is very essential to fix the calcium they forget they may take lot of uh, calcium through you know consuming eggs and milk but then uh, they never expose it so it's a routine they have to uh, make it always sitting in ac or you know sitting in uh, indoor so it will affect your health uh, or because of some time worriness so if you too much worried your uh, mobilization of nutrients into your body it uh, harms so that's the reason that sufficient nutrients is not available so your hair so you know become gray yeah. and you will too much worried okay so remove your worries and your hair will become <laughs> black okay <laughs> okay so yeah you want to say madam also want to say yeah. first of all uh, ma'am i want to thank you sada thank you, for thank elaborating you. and you have mentioned everything regarding the requirement of all the nutrients why we need all those things and ma'am here i want to add one point regarding this gray hair <laughs> coming out of gray hair in the young stage uh, here our experience i'm also having a lot of gray hair uh, this is artificial <laughs> and that thing <laughs> but but uh, uh, during our childhood ma'am we practice particularly in manipur we practice uh, that we never use a shampoo during our childhood our parents our elders like uh, na, uh, grannies and they never use this shampoo what we uh, was is this from uh, no there's rice water 
so the uh, rice water we drain uh, this for cooking we drain it out the rice water in the rice water lot of herbs like azuratium we put it and the vitex we put it and for the giving uh, a good aroma lot of uh, this herbs we uh, put it and boil and we give it uh, for the overnight and next day we uh, wash with that rice water boil rice water means uh, then it gives uh, this one lustering to our hair also as well as what even means gray hair just doesn't come our elders a very less number of gray hairs come but now it is this practice almost forgotten means uh, we have no time to prepare all those thing and the herbs we don't have no time so this might be one of the factor particularly in manipur this early days gray hair appearance of gray hair is very very less and uh, ma'am this one more question the question is uh, from my personal view as you have said ghee is important so we uh, i myself also aware of uh, means afraid of eating too much ghee because mm -hmm. i'm not a thin i'm not, not a slim what fat you that's why we always eat uh, this one afraid of eating lot of uh, ghee because it will deposit fat in our body like mm -hmm. that we have uh, this mindset so mm -hmm. is it true mm -hmm. or am I, uh, or uh, this one what is your comment ma'am yeah. Uh, yeah so when it comes to oil or fat See, basically, eating fat will never make you fat. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, another thing is uh, our diet. Uh, if you say the daily diet intake, as I mentioned earlier, also it is more of carbohydrates. And in body, yeah. what happens? Carbohydrates gets converted into fatty uh, fat layers because they are excess in our body. so when you are eating carbohydrate also more and fat like ghee also more then it will give you a problem but the proportion like the normal proportion if we see 50 to 60% of uh, calories should come from carbohydrate 15 to 20% should come from protein and remaining should come from fat so that fat is basically invisible and visible so invisible also with no, if you are a non veg vegetarian many non veg uh, foods are high in rich in fat so you have to manage that also so uh, when you are having high carbohydrate diet plus increasing your ghee it will put on weight but if you are minimizing your carbohydrate intake and having good quality fat that is also very important like ghee and four oils which i mentioned which is age old oils uh, we are having in india so this refined oils uh, after, they have come after like rice bran oil soya bean oil then sunflower oil sunflower seeds if you are eating are good but sunflower oil if you are having then which is not good so this is directly it will never put you on but indirectly if you are a combination uh, your combination is not happening well then it will put on weight so you have to be careful on this way okay thank you ma'am uh, some more yeah. questions yeah, a few more question uh, please sir uh, what are the vegetables uh, oh that is you have answered uh, how much uh, uh, can we access the approximate amount of nutrient and micronutrient in one indian common thali uh regional thalis will give you your entire uh, requirements it will fulfill your entire requirements but if you stick to it for this i uh, i will like to give one example nowadays what is happening in restaurants you are getting thalis but those are unlimited thalis and if we see the traditional thali each and every item uh, uh, given to that thali there is some quantity mentioned in it if you are exceeding the quantity which will give you in uh, you will land up in trouble so all traditional thalis with that required amount of each and every ingredient is very very important so like i can give you i am a maharashtrian so in maharashtra whenever festival food is there we prepare a maharashtrian thali and there is a system of uh, Uh, laying out that thali also, and in that, if we see the semai khir, the quantity is only one teaspoon. And now, what will happen? If you like it, you keep on 
having cutoris on cutoris so this things the quantity quality is very important when you are placing up a thali in any uh, state so state wise thalis now you get that bahubali thali also so bahubali thali is like uh, thalis uh, in bigger size and <laughs> given and two three people eat together you don't know how much you are eating so those things we have to avoid when one more question this is uh, how how tree bone oil can be utilized that tree bone oil he has mentioned here hmm. this like um uh, <laughs> uh, mahua seed oil okay, salt okay, seed okay, oil okay. chirwa oil how much we can take it and uh, with that i will also ask one question madam uh, uh, so how much we can take that one and the another question from my side like this castor oil will mm -hmm. they have any side mm -hmm. effect like uh, for a children you know for stomach clean up they give this castor oil so uh, will it they have any side effect it will not have any side effect but again uh, if these kind of foods it's like a isab gold psyllium husk if you have a habit of taking isab gol it makes uh, your body is get used to it so it becomes a habituate and you tend to have more and more daily so as a medicinal value if you are using it it will never harm but it should not be like every week you are feeding or every day you are feeding your child uh, castor oil for uh, good bowel movements this this we should not uh, practice it at all so this one how much we can take madam this uh, uh, tree bone oil like mahua seed oil salt seed oil chirwa oil forest tree seed also for biodiesel purpose so uh, this this question is these all the tree seed uh, oil so the question is uh, uh, can be utilized for food grade purpose uh, i think i have to go back to i have not researched on these kind of oils yet but i know the flaxseed oil flaxseed oil is very common and it is antioxidant anti inflammatory uh, then flax seeds are also used in daily diet for uh, reducing cholesterol uh, maintaining your blood glucose level so flaxseed oil i can tell like uh, there are therapeutic uses also so likewise if these uh, oils are having therapeutic uses then therapeutic doses we have to maintain them when for diabetic patients which vegetable and fruits are recommended in this season for diabetic patients all fruits and vegetables are okay but the quantity matters and it will depend what is their current sugar level on which medications they are uh, uh, on uh, so that all will have to take care of it otherwise there is no, there is nothing like no for anything for diabetics yeah that another question is eating rice in south india is energistive and uh, not in north indian as a south indian <laughs> so i think uh, he is asking about more about this food <laughs> okay rice uh, uh, see what happens again the local seasonal traditional is best in that part of the country and south indians are used to eating rice but when you come to north india and you are trying to eat the local brand then it will i hope it will not give you a problem but nowadays the refined products are available and we tend to eat this refined foods more which are which is uh, which lack fiber in it which lack essential nutrient in it and which might give you a problem when the next question is uh, which cooking oil can be used at a high heat you know yeah high heat and uh, yeah okay so uh, according to heat stability uh, the best uh, cooking medium is ghee then second could be mustard oil then coconut oil in coconut oil also you can uh, fry foods uh, but till oil and uh, groundnut oil uh, it is difficult for cooking madam please comment on hot and cholesterol percent diet asking diet the cholesterol uh, uh, again it is very important what is the lifestyle of that person what is the age what is height weight current weight what medications that person is on and uh, tailor made diets always helps so uh, for the cholesterol also what kind of foods uh, you have to avoid or not uh, uh, you have to incorporate 
that all depends on your daily current diet pattern so it it is uh, very difficult to tell you like one by one ki this food is fine that food is fine each and every food has its own benefits and the uh, sensitivity to each person also differs uh, madam two last question please answer is after this we will break uh, uh, ma'am can you tell us uh, some rice fiber ethnic food and its uses as a nowadays many people are prone to digestive problem hmm. yeah digestive problem is very common uh, yeah, in, yeah. in northeast people having it Mm -hmm. So some uh, rich fiber eating. Digestive problems is see fiber. Uh, there are two kind of fibers. One is soluble and insoluble. So pectin is soluble fiber. So if you incorporate more of pectin foods in your diet, then it will give your uh, benefit. And fermented food actually fermented food are probiotic. You must be hearing about prebiotic and probiotic nowadays. People go for pills for it. but our traditional diets have fermented foods like simple pickles pickles are also very good probiotic they improve on your gut bacteria uh, like curd curd is a very good uh, source of probiotic and it improves your gut bacteria and so the uh, digestion process so lot of questions are there uh, due to time constraints i will uh, skip those and i will email to you if you uh, sure. email to them back uh, so please share your email madam can you uh, type it in the chat yeah i will uh, we will share it even for the student all the participant uh, all the participant you can ask the last question also uh, i would like to read it dr tenisa she was asking about uh, ma'am can you uh, can you tell me how much carbohydrate protein fat per day is required for healthy body okay first of all you will have to understand uh, what is your total energy requirement on that basis the carbohydrate should be 50 to 60% then protein should be 15 to 20% and 10 to 15% of your fats but fat keep it in mind it is invisible and visible because many a products which have invisible fat in it. so not only uh, the oil or ghee into spoon in uh, in teaspoon but the food also has invisible fat this is the proportion which is basic yeah thank you so much madam for thank you thank you so much elaborating this nutritional uh, points uh, you know presenting nicely and highlighting the importance of ethnic food and uh, how Uh, their role in our immune system and protective and other thing thank you so much madam thank you and uh, dear participant uh, uh, yeah uh, please come at uh, 2:30 the next session will start at uh, 2:30 uh, so we have a inaugural program from our college tomorrow uh, so we will be uh, having this our session in the afternoon uh, shortening our program please join us and there won't be any quiz your attendance is uh, important and it is valued and i will be sending the link today please write your name properly and your email we have been conducting lot of uh, webinars uh, for many times you mistakenly type the email so it will bounce back in one go maybe you know 20 to 30 emails bounce back so type your email verify it and send to us and if your email is not correct and we cannot trace it out okay so your attendance is very important for your certificate today and uh, there won't be any uh, quiz okay so your attendance is very important you can comments on youtube if you have any questions and uh, uh, give your attendance those who are not there uh, join through zoom and uh, visit the youtube link and comment on it and i'll give uh, organizing secretary for further comments thank you all the participant for making this webinar a successful and uh, so i request you all to assemble at 2:30 so we have another lecture from a renowned resource person uh, uh, is this regarding the empowerment of these uh, ethnic food ecotourism uh, regarding the ecotourism empowerment by ethnic food so i request you all to assemble at 2:30 once again 
thank you all. Now the morning session is over. Thank you.